Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. I'm going to make some bad noises here while I take my tie off because this is going to be that kind of video. We're going to make a mess. An impressive level of mess. And if I trash my tie, I'll get yelled at. So there, tie's off because, damn it, we're working here. And I'm going to find gloves. Don't you like that? I got that kitchen show thing. Okay, right here. See, one of these days I'm just going to pull like a turkey out of there just to freak you guys out. So if you've been watching the past 17 videos, you'll notice that we took apart a really big robot. And I saved some of the nifty pieces from it to do more detailed stuff on. One of them is this. This is the Axis One drive motor of Doom that we were working with. And it's got what I believe to be a planetary gear drive system tucked in here. And I want to get a look at that because they're kind of cool. So I took off the ring out here so that we could see the bearing inside. And I cleaned all that gear out. And it's a really weird lube they use in this. It's a, in fact, it is a shell Tevela compound A, at least according to the nifty sticker on the side. And it's this really weird color of something that should only be nuclear waste. Now I've got that apart and it's loose and moving. So let's see if we can get it open. Ah! and let the mess begin. Oh yeah, that's a nasty sound. Oh, and it weighs a small ton. Okay, so now we're into it and let's see what we can find. And you can see it's got the, the really weird colored goop. But thankfully, I have a goop container. So let's take out what we get. Now these appear to be rollers. I'm just going to put them in here. Oh, that's so nasty. Oh, yeah. This is why I make the big money. Oh, yeah. Ew. <laughs> it's so wrong. Really, what, what I wish I could convey through this medium is the smell, because wow, does this stink. So, okay, we've got that, and buried in a goop, we have a nut right there, and we've got this outer gear, which I think is part of the housing, but it's, it's toothed. Now, that does not have matching teeth on it, so. And we've got a big bearing right here. And I'm going to take a minute and clean up some of this goop so that you guys can see in here. So we'll be back in a second. All right, we're back. And this is so nasty. <laughs> so very wrong. And I've got this big nut in the middle here that I'm dinking with, trying to get off. And I've got goop covering everything. So it's time for another pair of gloves. Oh, by the way, to get the lubricant out of there, Mikey came up with a brilliant idea, probably because I mentioned a turkey, but uh, we, we tried a turkey baster and it worked surprisingly well, actually. But uh, yeah, that was, that's never getting used for food again. It's a common thing around here in, uh, in the lab is we'll use everyday household objects in a manner inconsistent with their labeling and in ways that never allow them to be used for food again. And yeah. So we've got that. No, let me see if I can get that off. No, I can't get it with my hands. It's just a bit too tight. This is one of those jobs where you just know you're going to cover every tool you own in goop. And this washer has, or this nut has a washer under it that's bent. I don't know if it was intentional or not. It's just too hard to do with finger tight, but doing it with pliers seems futile. But we'll get it off there. Okay, there we go. So there's our big nut in the middle, and here's the bent washer. I don't know how that happened. Maybe it's a thing to keep it together under certain conditions. 
And then we've got another washer. Uh, this has all probably been sealed in here for 20 or so years. Got goop all over my hand. I'm trying to keep my tool cleaning to a minimum. So I'll wipe off the gratuitous amounts of goop. And this stuff stains everything orange. So lots of paper towels on this job. Yeah, that doesn't move either way. Okay. Ah! That whole thing's coming. Okay, this is getting really interesting. You'll notice we've got the little rings on the side here. Well, there's a sprocket that fits it, and the sprocket has like one tooth less. So that might be either a centrifugal drive or a form of pump or God knows, but oh, I have to pull the whole thing out. Okay. This is going to be icky. Really, really icky. So I'm going to put two paper towels down before I even do it. And you'll notice we have the table covered with a sheet of plastic. We built the table like that for a reason. That reason is things like this. I figured out how it comes out. OK, that goes there. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's so nasty. Yeah. Lots of loop. And there's circular tracks in the bottom. Well, that is the gear drive, but I'm still not entirely sure how it works. I've never quite seen anything exactly like this. Now, we've got. I've seen gear drives before. I've just never, it doesn't look, I was expecting to open this up and find a planetary gear drive, but I'm not entirely sure this is a gear drive. It might be a pump. Now that is very possible. This might be a hydraulic pump because it kind of looks like the fuel pump in a car 